have you ever wondered what is the difference between selenite and satin spar? Or if your selenite is fake, is satin spar fake selenite? In today's crystal chat video, we are going to be talking all about selenite versus satin spar. What is the difference? What are their properties and how to tell if your selenite is fake? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel, I make crystal videos, spiritual videos, fun vlogs, and more. Today's video is a crystal chat video where we do a bit of a deep dive into one specific crystal so I can tell you all about its geology, spiritual properties, how to take care of it, how to tell if it's fake, and more. So today's crystal of the day is selenite. Selenite is a very common crystal that you've definitely heard of and probably own if you're into crystals at all but there is a bit of controversy regarding its name. So let's get into it. You are looking for a selenite crystal. This is probably what you have in mind. This is probably the most typical selenite you could think of. But some people say that that is fake selenite. This crystal here, just like the one I just showed you, these are called satin spar. And this is true selenite. So satin spar and selenite. Satin spar and selenite are both varieties of the same exact mineral, which is gypsum. So they are the same mineral, same composition, same properties. They are just different forms of it. Satin spar, which I showed you first, is the most common variety of gypsum that you'll probably see in just about every single crystal store. And this is what you will see people calling selenite. However, a lot of people say that this satin spar is fake selenite and that this is the true, real selenite. It's easy to tell the difference between selenite and satin spar because selenite comes in these flat sheets. They're usually pretty transparent and they can break off. I won't break this one because this one's mine, but they break pretty easily. See, you can see it's actually like peeling and flaking. Whereas satin spar is not transparent. It is more of a bright white with a cat's eye effect. It is also pretty flaky, but it does not really come in those sheets like selenite does. But like I said, both of these crystals are both varieties of the same exact mineral, which is gypsum. So I personally don't find any harm in calling satin spar by the name of selenite because they're the same mineral. And I definitely don't consider satin spar to be a fake selenite. I know a lot of people do consider it to be fake. Normally, I am very strict about not wanting crystals to be mislabeled and to call things as they are. But in this case, I feel like it is generally harmless to call satin spar selenite, especially since just about everyone knows the material as selenite. Because satin spar is so widely known as selenite already, I don't see any harm in continuing to label satin spar as selenite, considering they're the same mineral, and that's what most people have in mind when they are searching up selenite. And especially since both of these have the same healing and metaphysical properties, and I don't see any harm in calling them both selenite. Both satin spar and true selenite are very, very abundant crystals. You can find them in just about any crystal shop. They are not expensive at all. I've seen satin spar selenite sold in Home Goods, Five Below. You can get selenite anywhere you can find crystals. They are very accessible. And while this variety of selenite is going to be a little trickier to find, it is by no means inaccessible or expensive. When I had these in my shop, they were like $11. So you should not be paying a ton of money for selenite of any sort. So satin spar and selenite are not the only varieties of the mineral gypsum. Another variety of the mineral gypsum is desert rose, which you may also be familiar with. It is a variety that is formed with wind and water in sandy conditions. There are also gypsum flowers, which are crazy looking. There is tabular gypsum, which I think is pretty uncommon. I've never seen it. Alabaster, which is a fine grained variety of gypsum. And then we have regular selenite, but there's also this variety of selenite, which I love, golden healer selenite, which has iron inclusions. And then there is satin spar, which we all know and love. And it also comes in a peach variety. So if you ever see an orangey variety of satin spar, that is natural. Gypsum is a really interesting mineral because it is actually found on literally 
every continent on earth. It is very, very widespread, abundant. Gypsum has a hardness of two out of 10 on the most scale of hardness, which means it is a very soft mineral. It can easily be scratched with just a fingernail. I know a lot of misinformation comes from TikTok and one of those pieces of misinformation is that if your crystal scratches at all, that means it is fake. And that is definitely not something you wanna to listen to when it comes to selenite because selenite will scratch very easily. All varieties of gypsum will scratch, whether it be the satin spar or the regular selenite. If your selenite scratches, that does not mean it's fake. In fact, if it scratches, it's probably real. I've been asked before if selenite naturally forms in this shape, like is this a natural shape you would find out in nature? And these little towers, well, this one's not little, but these tower shapes are very, very common for selenite, but they do not form like this. They form in longer rods and they are chipped away to make these towers. Selenite is really cool because some of the largest crystals ever found were made of selenite. The largest selenite crystals ever were 12 meters long and weighed 55 tons. Because of its softness, selenite should definitely be kept out of water as it can crack and break down. I remember I saw a video on TikTok of someone who made a crystal elixir with selenite and drink the water, definitely do not do that with any crystal, especially selenite because it has these shards that will come off and break and it will break down in the water. You do not want to be consuming that. Selenite is safe to leave out in the sun, but it can become dull and have less of a cat's eye effect if it is left out for too long, but I've never experienced that to be an issue. So I think you would have to leave it out for a pretty long time to have any issues. Selenite does not make very good jewelry due to its softness and very easy to scratch. However, it's not dangerous by any means to wear. So if you do have a selenite bracelet or a selenite pendant, it's totally safe to wear. Just be cautious that it can damage your stone if you are wearing it too often or not being gentle with it. Selenite is one of the best crystals to use for charging and cleansing other crystals. And it actually is able to charge and cleanse its own energy. So selenite does not need to be cleansed by other means such as water, smoke, salt. But if you do wanna cleanse your selenite, avoid water, but small amounts of sunlight, moonlight, smoke cleansing, or salt for short periods of time are good to cleanse your selenite if you do want to do that. Like we talked about, many people consider satin spar to be fake selenite. And we already debunked that this is not true. Both satin spar and selenite are naturally occurring varieties of the mineral gypsum. Neither of them are fake. Therefore, I would not consider satin spar to be fake selenite. Personally, I have never seen truly fake man-made selenite on the market at all. Especially since selenite is such a abundant and affordable mineral, there is really no need to fake it. I would not be concerned about receiving fake selenite or satin spar from any reputable crystal shop. If you are considering if your piece is fake or real, I would say there's a 99.9% .9 chance that it is genuine because there just aren't fake selenite out on the market. And like I showed you, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between satin spar and selenite. They look very different. So there's a chance that your satin spar may have been labeled as selenite, but there's a very low chance that it is truly fake. But if you are worried about finding fake selenite on the market, just because I haven't seen it does not mean that it doesn't exist. So here are some things to look out for if you wanna see if your selenite is fake. People have said that there is glass or plastic or clear quartz being sold as selenite. And the easiest way to tell the difference between a clear quartz and a selenite is the hardness. Clear quartz, glass, and plastic all have a much higher hardness than selenite does because gypsum is a hardness level of two. So if it scratches with your fingernail or pretty much anything, it's most likely selenite. Any crystals made of glass or plastic may have bubbles in them or like totally no imperfections at all. And that is a dead giveaway that it is not a genuine crystal. When it comes to tests like the temperature test or the burn test to tell if your crystals are fake, I don't find those two tests to be useful or valuable in any way, especially when it comes to selenite because many people will say that if your crystal is cold to the touch, that is a sign that it is a genuine crystal. But for some reason that rule doesn't apply when it comes to selenite. It's said that selenite should actually not be cold to the touch. So I just don't find these things to be useful. I find it to be so arbitrary. You don't need to burn your crystal or 
measure its temperature to see if it's real or not. If you're questioning a piece of selenite in your collection, wondering if it is genuine or not, it most likely is, especially if it is very soft and fragile and you got it from a reputable shop, it's very unlikely that it is fake. There are a couple things to look out for though when it comes to selenite, one of which is dyed selenite. You will see selenite sticks that come in crazy colors. These are always dyed. The only colors that selenite would come in are clear, white, or if it has inclusions like the golden healer that I showed you, or satin spar also comes in that peach color. But if you're seeing reds, greens, blues, these are dyed satin spar, and they are almost always labeled as dyed, so I don't think you have to worry much about getting tricked by these. Another thing to look out for when you are looking for selenite is a mineral called eulexite. Eulexite is a totally different mineral than gypsum. They are not the same. However, eulexite looks exactly like satin spar. Bar. When I first discovered that eulexite was a thing, I kind of freaked out a little bit because I thought, oh my god, all of my satin spar is actually eulexite. I've been mislabeling it this entire time. I panicked a little bit, but I looked into it and eulexite is pretty uncommon on the crystal market. You're not going to see it very often. And typically if someone has eulexite in their possession, they know what it is and they know to properly label it. So I don't think this is something that you will encounter, but just to be on the safe side, here are some pictures that help show you the difference between satin spar and eulexite. Eulexite has a hardness of 2.5, which is just a tiny bit more hard than satin spar. So using the scratch test won't be very helpful in this. The best way to tell the difference between the two is by comparing their fiber optic properties. When it comes to looking at an image through a piece of satin spar versus a piece of eulexite, you will be able to see the image through the eulexite at more angles than you will the satin spar. That makes sense. It's a little hard to explain, but if you're looking at them both from the top, you will be able to see through both of them. But if you look at them through an angle, the satin spar will quickly become opaque. You won't be able to see through it anymore. Whereas with eulexite, you can see through and read the lettering at more angles. But like I said, these are not often mixed up. If someone has and is selling eulexite, it'll be labeled as eulexite. I've only seen this mineral maybe like two times in person. And every time I've seen it, it's in these small little pieces, whereas satin spar comes in so many different shapes, sizes, carvings. Another thing to look out for that is related to selenite is there are these sculptures on the market that include pieces of amethyst with a big piece of selenite in the middle or like balancing on top. These are super cool and beautiful pieces, but just so you know before purchasing these, these are not natural. They did not naturally come out of the earth like this. They are just sculptures, but the crystals used in these sculptures do appear to be natural most of the time. For the metaphysical and healing properties of selenite, like I said, satin spar and selenite will have the same metaphysical properties, so you can use either one for these purposes. So selenite is associated with the crown chakra and in my opinion is one of the best cleansing stones out there. It will cleanse any of your crystals. It will cleanse your space. It'll cleanse your aura and yourself. Oftentimes you'll see selenite charging plates, which are great for setting other crystals on. Selenite is great for removing negative energy within yourself or your space and purifying the energy in your home. It is also great for removing energy blockages within yourself. Selenite is a great stone to meditate with as it promotes peace, releases anxiety, and provides mental clarity. It has a very high vibration, which will allow you to connect with higher realms and can help awaken your psychic abilities while you're working with it. You will definitely feel your vibration raise and feel more at peace when you're working with selenite. So that's all I have today for you about selenite. I hope this cleared up any questions you may have regarding the satin spar versus selenite debate. If you want to revisit the information I talked about today or learn even more, I do have an article with all of this information up on my website, which I will link down below. If you'd like to purchase any selenite, I have some available on my website, cosmicgeology.com, and you can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. That will also be linked down below. Be sure to like and subscribe because I put out new videos just about every week. I've been slacking a little bit, but we are getting back on track. So new crystal chats every week. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.